loads to go through again. <laughs> so firstly the drums, and this is a really good example of drum variation within a chain. So if we just play the drums on their own, we can, uh, we're altering the pitch of one of the kick drums. So, yeah, different effects turning on and off where the automation tells them to. So we have a doubler here and also uh, a reverb. I think that hard cut in reverb is, um, is really interesting. Just suddenly moving into a different space. Um, and they are both macro controlled, some percussion. And again, two different patterns that you can turn on and off here. So, you know, of course you could program MIDI to do this, but there's something about having it uh, MIDI mapped that adds a slight, slight variation. And so does this one, slightly different. So you can just move between the two. And some doubler as well. Very cool. Um, our piano again, layered up with a loop of uh, a synth I've recorded in some bass also recorded in. The bass being just compressed against the kick drum a little bit. Let's have a look at this pad. So a really great way of creating um, a reverberated sound that isn't washed out with loads of reverb. So I'm using spectral blur here, as well as um, some delay, um, some, some reverb, but the reverb's going into the spectral blurring. So we're not getting just room sound, we're getting kind of this stretched spectral sound, um, which is just a slightly different uh, flavor, I suppose. Um, we can turn that off though to hear the dry synth signal. And uh, again, the panning is at the end of the chain, so it's cutting everything again. So it's not like we're just hearing this sound in a room. We're able to control the shape of the reverb-esque sound. Yeah, this spectral blur is really cool. Just two frequencies. Kind of like a spectral freeze effect. Really cool. Uh, some ghost pad sounds, some vocal pads. Again, uh, the ensemble plugin. Giving it some chorus, some distortion. pitch being controlled at the end there using uh, again pitch hack uh, set to fully reverse the sound is completely playing backwards which is really good for transitions that kind of rising effect same again erosion auto pan keeping everything you know a lot of repeat repeat effects here just to keep everything um, feeling familiar throughout the session and then this uh, kalimba sample I made that's going through Pitch Loop 89. Pitch Loop 89 is, again, a part of the Ableton 11 Suite collection, and it is incredible. It's uh, really similar to gray, uh, Granulator 2, um, but with just some different controls, and you know, it's nice to have different plugins that do slightly different things, so you're not just using Granulator all the time. Um, but it has a load of presets that you can go through. Um, this is just one that I created myself, just depending on what I wanted. And it's just um, moving the positions of the grains uh, in real time, giving it that kind of stuttery effect. It's also being run through uh, rings, which is a kind of a, a um, oh, what's it called? A frequency shifting kind of effect. Uh, some auto pan, some auto filter, and some more EQ. 
So kind of simple, really, but it's it's this pitch loop that's doing the bulk of the work. So I turn it off. You know, pretty straightforward. I can bring the ring in. And again, more panning. It's like a really tactile sound. It has a lot of impact, a lot of transient to it that um, I think is really awesome. And, you know, thumb pianos and kalimbas and things, they really have, you can really dial into that and almost get like a more of a percussive element out of it than a musical one. But in this case, we've exaggerated both using pitch loop. So yeah, that's arrangement five. Okay, our last section here, uh, arrangement six. So yeah, this one really is all about um, tape style pitching effects. There are so many plugins that do this. Um, Sketch Cassette is an amazingly good one. Uh, Echo Boy does it to an extent. Um, just loads. Oh, uh, the, one of the most popular is RC20, Retro Color 20. Um, all amazingly good tem tape emulations. Um, but then I found out that within Ableton, there is a vibrato subtle preset, again, in this chorus ensemble uh, plugin that we've used throughout this whole collection um, that lets you control the rate and amount of pitch bend, kind of like tape plugins do. Um, and I couldn't believe it. So let's, uh, I tried to show it then while we were listening to it. So this is it without um, any. But here we can see the amount, even just a little bit, gives it that that smooth pitch bend in and out. With some warmth as well. Amazing. I've been looking for that kind of thing for ages, just within Ableton. And here it is, uh, the Vibrato Subtle preset. Um, and again, we've, you know, added it into a chain of sounds we think really complement uh, uh, that kind of idea. So there's some erosion, there's a cabinet on here to make it, uh, you know, sound like it's being run through a, a real cabinet. Um, this is again, just the same uh, piano preset that we built um, that's all, all across this collection. Um, and yeah, I think it sounds great. Uh, we've rolled some of the bottom and the top off to get, again, you know, give it that old, sort of um, almost like it's being broadcast, a radio broadcast sound, uh, noise with erosion. Um, it does have some just classic uh, chorus on it. Um, I think it sounds great. So the same kind of thing, I'm just gonna jump ahead, is on this uh, up sound as well, which I really tried to exaggerate towards the end there. pull the rate down. Almost has like a Tyco sound. I'm probably overdoing it a little bit here, but you get the idea. Um, this is, uh, I think, interesting and worth talking about. So I programmed in this beat on the kick drum. Um, then I dragged it up to the hi-hat channel. Oh, whoops. And just uh, moved the MIDI across. So this is what it looked like before. Exactly the same as the kick drum. And then to give it that kind of delay sound, but again, without using any actual delay, just moved it across too. So 
sometimes just the simplest things can create really interesting uh, patterns. That uh, says, uh, that's a, yeah, just a straightforward drum rack. Um, the bass. Again, another sample from my uh, one of my synths. Not warped or anything, because I wanted it to just, I, well, I quite liked the way it just cut off. This is actually because the audio sample isn't long enough at this BPM to um, play all the way to the next note, but actually, uh, I think that works really well. Um, and when you have this uh, this uh, uh, chain yourself and you're running it in a project that's a high BPM, you don't have that problem. Um, but I've set it to just one voice and it re-triggers so there's no chance of uh, notes overlapping or anything. But it's just, again, uh, an oddly interesting way of creating uh, musicality and rhythm out of just, I didn't record the sample for long enough. <laughs> and it just cuts off and took me down this whole different path composing this arrangement so just interesting and worth pointing out I think and then finally some more bells because otherworldly bells are king with this genre I think so this is actually a wavetable uh, the harmonics uh, drop down menu spectral 2 oh, sorry uh, so we have filter cut off tone, which just moves through the uh, wavetable. Uh, space, warp. Warp just moves the uh, pulse, pulse width here, around. Uh, space is reverb, and then just a bit of a, you can uh, clean up the release there or, the, or increase the attack. So lots of things that are easily assignable to macros. Uh, some delay, and again, this uh, even more phaser <laughs> flanger effects. Quite a strong phaser here. Um, and finally, some more auto pan, just to give it some movement. And that's, uh, that's the sixth one. Really, really weird. <laughs> All right, there we go. Hope you enjoyed those. Um, I hope they've given you a good insight into the chains that we've built and the different things you can do with them. Uh, these are obviously really all just examples of what you can do with the templates that we've put together. Uh, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all do. Uh, so yeah, I guess I'll be back for the next one. Have a good day.